There are some disturbing, terrifying things being cited in Illinois State. From strange Bigfoot-like creatures, the Enfield horror, werewolf-looking creatures, even the Mothman, and some that are unexplainable. It seems that something sinister is lurking around every corner. In this episode, we're going to cover some of the most bizarre and terrifying eyewitness stories in the state. You won't want to miss this one. In the midst of a warm July in 1970, a story would unfold in the landscapes surrounding Farm City, Illinois. This would forever alter the tales around and in the town. It was on the clear night of July 9th between a canopy of beautiful summer stars that a group of adventure-seeking teenagers had found themselves at the epicenter of a chilling encounter. They had ventured out from the comfort of their homes to embrace the freedom of the wilderness for a night of carefree camping underneath these same stars. But little did these unwitting youths know, they were about to become part of a legend that is still talked about in the cornfields and forests of rural Illinois to this very day. As they gathered around the flickering glow of their campfire, laughing without a care, the dingy tree line bordering their makeshift camp slowly began to stir. A twig snapped in the darkness, too loud to be a harmless forest creature, and the teens all froze, their laughs caught in their throats as the tall grass began to rustle. Now the firelight cast dancing shadows across their stricken faces as they would peer out into the blackness, all of their pulses quickening. A shape was moving in the dark, far larger than any local wildlife, and it was coming right for them. This was something so bizarre, so unearthly in its form, that it simply defied all rational explanation. It was described as man-like in stance, yet beastly in appearance. This entity was draped in a shaggy coat of fur, its eyes aglow as they would pierce through the night, twin fires that hinted at an even greater blaze within. Now, these petrified teenagers could hardly trust their own eyes. Before them stood not any creature they had ever recognized, but something far more cryptic and otherworldly, a being perhaps not of this natural realm at all. Now, word of this chilling encounter soon began to ripple through Farm City, each retelling and passing through the grapevine, adding a new layer of fear and mystique to what was becoming a legend. Now, in the days that followed, there were additional sightings of this bizarre, obscure creature that were reported. Each new account would add credibility to the teen's initial run-in. Now, townsfolk who had first brushed it off as youthful embellishment began to reluctantly entertain the possibility that something truly unknown was now roaming their backwoods and cultivated fields. Was it some displaced beast? A phantom of the forest, maybe? Or something far more ominous and unexplained? The answers continue to remain as elusive as the creature itself. This very being became known as the Farm City Monster. And in fact, it will leave a mark on this small rural community. The odd events of that very summer became a pivotal, if still ambiguous, chapter in the region's history of the unexplained. Now, shortly after this event, high strangeness would strike once again. In the year of 1972, a veil of mystery had descended upon the once peaceful quiet town of Peoria, Illinois. It was here, along the twisting rural stretch of road known commonly as Coal Hollow, that an extraordinary account had emerged, one steeped in primordial fear. This now infamous tale, which would soon entrance and baffle residents across Peoria and beyond, innocuously began with a local family's routine weekend outing to a nearby park. However, what the unwitting family witnessed that evening was anything but normal. 
As dusk fell and skies slowly darkened, the parked family spotted something utterly perplexing in the distance. Strange lights moving about, dancing and weaving with no obvious signs of purpose or origin. Though initially brushed off as some trick of the light or the shadows or even imagination, these unidentified lights were soon to be recognized as something far more strange. For it wasn't long after this incident that the first sightings of what locals dubbed the Cohomo or Coal Hollow Monster began to surface. Now, by scattered accounts, the Coal Hollow Road Monster was described as this massive, hairy, bipedal creature which seemed to prowl the tree line all along the winding rural road, just watching and waiting and then vanishing back into the shadows whenever it wished. Its hulking dimensions were said to be formidable, striking both awe and terror into all witnesses from farm and town folk alike. Though initial reports were often dismissed as fiction or even flights of fancy, as more accounts had trickled in, residents began finding themselves reluctantly grappling with the possibility that something they knew not what was indeed stalking their remote byways. Now, before long, rumors of this monster began to spread and it was like this creeping unstoppable wildfire igniting this combustible mix of macabre curiosity and raw fear among all who dwelt in this area some thrill seekers began to lurk along Kohalo themselves cameras and crude weapons in tow hoping to snatch some sight or even proof of this creature's existence Others would lock their doors tight as soon as the sun sank low, newly wary of what unearthly things might tread beneath the forest cloak of darkness only mere miles away from their very homes. While many questions lingered about, the Coal Hollow Road monster had decisively etched itself into the public consciousness of this small community. So we have to ask, had the families and farmers spotted mere figments wrought by group hysteria and perhaps overactive imaginations? Or, folks, could there truly be some never-before-documented man-beast stalking the liminal gaps between the forest and field, legend and reality? Then... The following year in Enfield, one of the most infamous events would take place in the state's paranormal history. It was the spring of 1973. The small rural town of Enfield, Illinois, had become the unexpected epicenter of a story so odd and chilling, it would leave a mark on the strange annals of the unexplained. It all began on a seemingly normal April night, the 25th to be exact, when a local man named Henry McDaniel had returned to his isolated rural home, unaware he was about to have an encounter that would rattle the very foundations of his reality. As McDaniel approached his home after a day's work in town, he began to hear a sound. A bizarre scratching sound began to greet him from the darkness just outside his back door. Now, driven by equal parts curiosity and trepidation, he would peer out into the night, and to his utter terror and shock and confusion, he would see a creature the likes of which no man had ever laid eyes upon. There on his very doorstep stood an apparition of sheer alien terror. The entity, described as having three stout legs, a coat of short matte black hair, and what he would describe as eerily intelligent eyes glowed pink as the fading sunset, and it seemed to defy all sensible laws of nature and anatomy. Now, in a moment of instinctual fear and self-defense, McDaniel fired his rifle at this thing, but with an almost pre-natural agility, it defied its freakish shape, it leapt away into the shadows, leaving behind only a trail of outlandishly long three-toed prints and a miasma of fear and questions hanging unanswered. But, folks, this chilling tale would not end here, because on May 6th, this same entity returned to the McDaniel home. 
and McDaniel once again would lay eyes upon this same bizarre creature, reinforcing the tangible reality of this earlier brush with the unknown. The entity, consistent in its unnatural form, would continue to elude all rational understanding. Now, these weird encounters would begin sparking a wave of fear across Enfield and all the surrounding farmland. Behind closed doors, the town would begin to speculate about the creature that would come to be known as the Enfield Monster. What was it? An alien life form, a genetic mutation run amok, or maybe a freakish beast from the bowels of an undiscovered wilderness. Unfortunately, any tangible explanations remained scarce. The truth behind the strange entity continues to remain a mystery. However, folks, things were just getting started for Illinois State. Strange beings were beginning to be spotted and reported all over the state. Now, in the densely populated urban heart of Chicago, Cook County, around the year of 1973, a tale unfolded that would truly begin to blur the lines between simple dismissed urban legend and disquieting reality. It was still... An ordinary summer night, far removed from the peaceful lakes and darkened forest where such stories typically happen. Yet even here, amid the maze of buildings and the dedicated hum of city activity, one unassuming basement bedroom became the stage for a strange encounter that continues to defy understanding. The hour was close to four in the morning. It was then, in the pre-dawn, that a low, unnatural growl disturbed the silence, rousing a young 11-year-old girl, her siblings, and cousin from their makeshift beds about the basement. Now, the source of their unease soon became clear. It was their dog, hackles raised, fixated at the room's sole window and the empty alley beyond it. Peering past the dog's agitated form, the children made out a series of small, slow movements in the dim amber glow of the street lamp outside. Now, as their eyes adjusted to the shadows, a frightening sight gradually materialized. The indistinct outline of some large, oddly shaped figure seemed to be lumbering about outside in the gloom. Though its exact form was obscured, Something in its posture and erratic gestures would suggest an otherworldly energy, enough to send a chill down the spine and conjure images better suited to nightmares than Chicago's side streets. Now, their panic screams soon drew the attention of two teen male cousins who had passed out upstairs. In response, these boys rushed outside, intent on confronting this prowler. However, what they encountered in that sparse light was far beyond any ordinary peeping Tom or trespasser. Stealing their nerves as they approached, it became unsettlingly clear that this was no man, but nor was it any kind of ordinary animal. Darting through slashes of street lamp luminescence, the figure's outline exuded a distinctly lupine aspect, enough to stoke a creeping sense of impossibility in the pit of the teen's guts. Now, as the brief chase continued down shadow-strewn alleys, each glimpsed characteristic under a dim orange light seemed to reinforce the impossible. Their target appeared to possess the haunches, fur, and rippling lope of a wolf. Yet its ropey arms would swing with this disturbingly human gait, then dismissing it at first as some kind of prank or elaborate Hollywood costume, the deeper implications soon began to shake the cousin's skepticism. This was no outfit, nor even a freakish wild dog. Every detail, from its height to the way tufts bristled behind real canine ears, was simply far too anatomically accurate. Somehow, beyond reason, what they were now chasing through downtown Chicago was a honest-to-God Werewolf. Just as soon as the reality of such a thing had sunken in, the creature had vanished for good into the maze of streets and concrete. Had this all been some elaborate hoax, or had they truly stood snout to face with a legend given flesh? A beast once only thought to exist in the remote Northwoods 
but now prowling Chicago's own back alleys as casually as any rodent or vagrant. Now, tales of other strange beings exist too. In the late November of an unspecified year, the pastoral stillness of Chandlerville, Illinois, a sleepy rural town nestled in the heart of the state's remote croplands, was shattered by a strange roadside encounter that defied all attempts at any rational explanation. The story unfolded along a lonely, fog-lined stretch of Illinois Route 78, a highway usually only known for its scenic tranquility rather than strange happenings. But on this particular evening, a lone driver had journeyed along the rural route, anticipating nothing more than the same muted, familiar journey that he had driven for years. However, what transpired next along that forgotten section of road would ultimately transfigure this man's ordinary trip into a tale of the paranormal. A colossal shape would lumber from the darkened wall of forest, lining the asphalt, striding into the gleam of high-beam headlights. The stunned driver could do very little but gape in awe and fear as none other than Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call him, manifested itself before his vehicle. The witness would later describe this towering creature with vivid detail. It stood well over eight feet tall as it paused to regard the truck, its torso rippling muscles beneath a sleek coat of jet black hair that shone under the headlamp's glare. Its tree trunk-like legs easily supported the mammoth frame as its long, powerful arms swung ponderously at its sides in a way no costumed human could possibly imitate. But perhaps most striking of all was the face, the face that eyed the driver briefly from beneath a heavy, ape-like brow, shadowed and somber in expression, but yet somehow possessing an intelligence and depth that seemed disconcertingly almost human. Before the petrified man could truly process what it was he was witnessing, this thing turned and then vanished back into the darkened woods from which it came with this animalistic grace despite its massive frame. Now, the brief but fateful glimpse had left the witness completely reeling. He had not merely spotted just a rare animal, nor even a known species thought extinct. That highway encounter had been something far more profound, a being that by all rights should not walk this earth in this age, yet undeniably did so. Had it just been a trick of shadows or maybe leaves, an outsider's expensive prank or a hoax, or could it be that one of their own had truly stared into the eyes of a legend? Had this man truly glimpsed Bigfoot? In the year of 1991, along the lonely rural highways of Christian County, Illinois, a seemingly mundane late-night journey soon unfolded into a very similar encounter as the last one, one that would linger vividly in these two men's memories for decades to come. The incident began with a simple act of friendship, one man driving hours round trip to go pick up his buddy, Brian, from the last Greyhound bus located back in St. Louis. Now excited to catch up, the pair made a small detour to stake and shake before finally pointing the truck towards home. As the hours pleasantly slipped by with conversation, both felt utterly at ease cruising the night roads accompanied only by the radio's muted glow. But as the clock edged ever later and the city's lights faded to black countryside, a spur-of-the-moment detour was about to unveil a fleeting yet startling roadside spectacle that would change their reality. Their quickest route took the ambling pickup through Taylorville, then veering southeast towards Assumption while bypassing Old Illinois 104 to Pana. The road here wound closely by the heavily wooded shores of Lake Bertinetti, which at the time there was new housing development still largely amidst in rural central Illinois. No dense stands of darkened forest imparted an intensifying sense of isolation, like stepping from one world to another now that the night was rid of all previous urban 
backdrop. Approaching a one-lane bridge over creek-fed marshland, the two men were casually debating when a sudden blur of movement from the woods to the right instantly grabbed their attention. With otherworldly speed and agility, this enormous canine-like creature had burst from the woods in total silence to launch itself clear over the rural highway in one single impossible leap. The beast, a rugged blend of silver gray and light brown fur, appeared almost primate in its sheer muscularity and imposing size. Then, having easily cleared over 40 feet of asphalt from its dug launch point on one ditch bank to the other, it vanished back in the shadows without a second, leaving only a wake of shocked disbelief in these stunned men. Now, the entire encounter had lasted mere seconds from start to finish, leaving really no time for shouts or reaction. As their pickup slowly rolled to a halt, well past the sighting point, a stunned silence filled the entire cab and both passengers struggled to process the magnitude of what they just witnessed. Neither could dismiss it as ordinary wildlife. I mean, the sheer imposing bulk, distance leapt, and eccentric coloration pointed to something far stranger than any local megafauna. Could these men have witnessed what many in the Midwest know as the Dogman? Now, let's travel to more recent times where disturbing events are taking place. The year is 2016, and it marked one such period of lofty aspirations, with DARPA's experimental XS-1 space plane capturing imaginations worldwide as a reusable craft that could revolutionize access to orbit. Yet, even as NASA and private interest fixed eyes on the stars, a series of far more grounded events were quietly unfolding all across Illinois and the country. On the night of May 22nd, the usually quiet skies above McHenry County were lit up by a strange spectacle that defied all conventional explanation. A local motorist, while traversing the rural roads near Spring Grove right around 9.30 p.m., witnessed something alien gliding through the dark above their route. A massive, utterly silent triangular aircraft estimated at over 200 feet in size, hovering eerily some distance above the pavement. Drawn by equal parts disbelief and curiosity, this witness managed to steer their vehicle close enough to pass almost directly underneath the unidentified floating form. Now, upon returning to the site mere minutes later, the observer noted how the obsidian black craft had entered an almost playful banking turn, slowly rotating one apex of the triangle earthwards in a manner that defied both physics and FAA regulations alike. As reported by Science Like Inquisitor, this 2016 Illinois sighting poured additional fuel on the fires of persistent rumors that an unknown class of stealth reconnaissance plane had been conducting after-dark test flights over the continental United States, possibly hearkening from the same semi-mythical Aurora program best known for its supposed hypersonic SR-91 Black Manta. Rural Illinois skies, as it happens, share a deep and tangled history with sightings of these unnerving high-tech triangles. One notable 2004 incident in St. Clair County involved multiple deputies observing a similar ponderous moving craft drift above their patrol route in the lonely pre-dawn hours, even capturing an indistinct Polaroid snapshot to memorialize the encounter. Though details fade with each passing Illinois winter, eyewitness reports continue with regularity. Now, explanations for these encounters do vary wildly, spanning theories of black budget air guard units testing classified aircraft to literal out-of-this-world conjectures. 
The Federation of American Scientists themselves once reported on sightings of vast triangular craft cruising Midwest skies, executing gravity-defying aerial maneuvers that seemingly laugh in the face of both physics and our conceptions of aeronautics alike. Now, this strange, enduring Illinois phenomenon begs unsettling questions. What manner of aircraft still lurks in our midst? And who is flying it? How long until the curtain between science fact and science fiction is finally drawn back? With scattered sightings still reported to this day, the truth behind the infamous black triangular UFO craft seen so often does remain a mystery. And while we're on the subject of things seen in the skies, in recent times, a mounting wave of eyewitness reports detailing strange winged humanoids has gripped the public imagination, igniting a renewed intrigue into the legend of the Mothman, an unexplained entity whose sudden resurgence now is sending fear and terror all across the rural Midwest. More skeptical minds brushed early sightings off as just misidentified herons, prankish hoaxes, or even the morbid reveries of overactive internet folklore. But yet a series of profoundly chilling encounters centered around Woodstock, Illinois, have begun to unravel the true unearthliness at play in these very accounts. February 28, 2019, in fact, one terrified local placed a frantic 911 call after being confronted by a towering winged specter near the Jewel Osco parking lot right off East Wood Drive. In his panicked testimony to singular Fordian investigator Tobias Wayland, the visibly shaken man described noticing an impossibly tall winged humanoid emerging from the tree line bordering the nearby McHenry County fairgrounds. Now, according to the witness, the entity sported muscular arms that transitioned into leathery wings while its face remained obscured in shadow. Giving off an otherworldly scream, it began sprinting directly at the paralyzed observer, halting its charge only yards away once both figures would make direct eye contact. It was then the petrified man noticed the creature's eyes shone with a chillingly intense glow, glaring from beneath a heavy brow ridge. Then as suddenly as it had manifested, the being unfurled its bat-like appendages, leaping skyward, rapidly vanishing amongst the bare winter canopy, while leaving only questions, fear, and trauma from the experience. It would later be uncovered following further interviews that this was not the first sighting of a strange humanoid form by the tree line of this same strip mall. Now, over the years, numerous reports have surfaced describing unnaturally large avian shapes and shadows emerging from the nearby Dewfield Pond Conservation Area at none other time than dusk. Now, beyond Woodstock, the states bordering the Great Lakes have become veritable hotbeds for such sightings, each bearing a very uncomfortably consistent thread of the strange and unexpected that seems to defy all of our earthly explanations. Of course, the obvious question lingers, as it has since the age of monsters began. Could these just be misinterpreted owls, herons, or even tricks of light? Or has something unexplained perhaps unexplainable, taken wing in Illinois once again. In the autumn of 2019, the normally bustling busy metropolis of Chicago, a city defined by its towering mirrored skyscrapers and vibrant culture, became the unlikely backdrop for a series of strange encounters seemingly torn from the pages of rural legend and myth. Beginning in early October, numerous reports began pouring in amongst people and airport employees alike detailing sightings of a horrifying winged entity lurking in the maze of runways and terminals comprising O'Hare International Airport. Eyewitnesses described an imposing jet-black humanoid figure adorned with expansive bat-like wings that allowed it to traverse and disappear amongst the miles of airfield with unnatural speed and agility. 
when illuminated by runway floodlights, some noted two disturbingly intense red eyes glowing from beneath the shadowed cowl of its face, watching aircraft movements intently before vanishing silently into the night. Now, two weeks later, these bizarre sightings took an even stranger turn when a similar winged figure was spotted circling high above the extravagant outdoor venue of a Rosemont wedding. Its gangly silhouette momentarily illuminated by reception lighting against an ominous twilight sky. Partygoers watched stunned as what could only be described as the Mothman of West Virginia fame and legend performed one last lazy circuit around the festivities before turning westward to disappear at an impossible speed over the Chicago suburbs, leaving only a chill in its wake. Now, understandably, these 2019 sightings would ignite a firestorm of speculation and confusion. Both the setting and appearance reported were utterly perplexing, combining a creature solely associated with rural mountain legend and 1960s Point Pleasant somehow transplanted into the modern urban jungle without explanation. As news spread and images surfaced of this strange figure stalking around the Chicago O'Hare International After Hours, both believers and skeptics found themselves reevaluating assumptions about the natural world and the strange phenomena potentially lurking just outside perception. On November 26th of that same year, a Chicago truck driver stood smoking beside his rig, transfixed by an unbelievable sight along the shadowed chain link perimeter of O'Hare International Airport. Now, in the moments prior, the man had caught unexpected movement from the corner of his eye near the slopes bordering an access tunnel. Expecting a large bird startled up from its roost, his gaze instead fell upon an upright figure strangely reminiscent of the infamous Mothman itself, there amongst the deafening roar of jet engines and steel. Hunching bug-like upon a small grassy hill, maybe some 50 yards distant, this entity appeared to be intently watching the long line of taxiing aircraft with a strange intensity. In the cast-off glow of nearby tarmac lamps, the observer described an undeniably humanoid torso morphing seamlessly into expansive black wings which flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, after several moments of this silhouette, the being gradually drew itself fully upright before then striding purposefully out into the open airfield. There it paused under the light of a brilliant half moon, beating its wings slowly as if testing the night air, then launched skyward to rapidly vanish into the dark horizon. Now, understandably shaken, the lone ground crewman chose not to report his bizarre observation until over a week later on December 4th. Yet, despite no corroborating sightings forthcoming, his vivid testimony seemed to closely reinforce other accounts emerging from all around northern Illinois and Chicago in the months to come. Many connected his story to twin October reports from O'Hare and suburban Rosemont describing an identical leathery-winged humanoid shadow being seen around the airport and city streets by night. A contemporary phantom by all accounts, identical to previous manifestations of the legendary Mothman himself throughout the 1960s in West Virginia. Eerily, this was not the trucker's first brush with the unknown either. He confessed to encountering a similar winged apparition with burning eyes years earlier during his youth in Mexico City. Sighting the beast silently circling above an open park just days prior to the catastrophic 1985 earthquake, which claimed thousands of innocent lives. An obscure yet undeniable precedent to Point Pleasant, which only deepened the unanswerable mystery surrounding the Chicago sightings. Now lastly, let's go back in time for a very strange account. 
Now, I'll need you to bear with me for a moment because we are going to travel far outside of the country to set the stage and so you can understand the full context. A remote Estonian village of Juminda in the early 1930s. This is where a dramatic brush with the strange left two local men's perspectives forever altered. While checking their fishing traps along the wooded shoreline one morning, the pair would spot what appeared to be a small, awkward child struggling to walk along the muddy bank nearby. Yet, as the friends would draw close, details began to reveal a far stranger truth. The creature, certainly not human, while roughly child-sized at no more than three feet tall, was clearly no human child at all, but rather a large-headed humanoid entity with strange brown-green skin that would glisten faintly. It was almost amphibian-like. Its features were dominated by two overly large, slit-pupiled eyes set above a wide, fish-like mouth that opened and closed slowly with each labored breath. Though attempting to retreat swiftly on two short hind legs, its movements held this pronounced awkwardness as if it was unaccustomed to the very land it traversed. Now, before the shaken fisherman could process this improbability, the being had vanished with surprising speed, leaving only questions as to whether one's eyes could ever be fully trusted again. Yet remarkably, this obscure rural folktale would find a disquieting parallel in revelations surrounding a separate encounter oceans away. Okay, now let's go back to Illinois, where an alleged abduction account of one Harrison Bailey in the woods of 1950s in Orland Park, Illinois, happened on the night of September 24th. As related years later to the Chicago Tribune, amongst other sources, Bailey's outwardly normal stroll through the darkened timber was suddenly interrupted by an acute burning sensation across his neck and an overwhelming bout of vertigo. Now, seconds after this, this dazed man found himself within a strange rounded chamber, then confronted by a group of of approximately 18-inch tall bipeds that seemed to exhibit distinctly amphibious features. His memories from there spiral into a blurred chronology of bizarre medical exams interspersed by the entity's odd croaking language. Bailey would later undergo hypnotic regression in an attempt to clarify the events, emerging with a very disturbing warning message from the creatures apparently implanted into his subconscious. Conscious. Mankind's potential for destruction has grown out of proportion with your ability to contain that force. It can only lead to ultimate devastation. Now, of course, the obvious questions linger. What did Harrison Bailey truly encounter that night in the forest, and could there be any correlation at all between the beings here and what was seen all those years ago? And because you guys have made it this far into the episode, I want you to all comment down below. Illinois is crazy. So, I know who made it to the end of the episode and, well, who didn't. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for more content just like this. As always, I love you all. Keep an open mind. And I'll see you guys all in the very next episode.